According to United Overseas Banks, state-owned banks' aggressive move to generate higher deposits to support lending for alleged government projects are distorting the structure of real interest rate. Yutashai Teya Rashakun, UOB Thai Executive Director and Country Head for Personal Financial Services, said Monday the actions by state banks mean the overall interest rate gap between short and long term fixed deposits is likely to continue narrowing as commercial banks will have to offer higher rates in a bid to compete. He said the government has to fund projects with about 100 billion baht, for which the state-owned banks have to generate larger deposits to provide the finance. Therefore, state banks have to offer higher deposit rates if they are going to attract more depositors. Commercial banks then have to respond by offering higher rates via campaigns, as a result of which deposit interest rates are higher than broad rates. He said the gap between short and long-term fixed deposits is also narrowing. UOB Thai cannot avoid a resulting fierce competition and is focusing on the areas in which it can be competitive. He said we use the AAA credit rating to speak with customers with customers to ensure the strong financial status. Meanwhile, we have captured affluent and high net worth cu customers instead of mass consumers. As we know, small banks cannot compete with larger banks in this segment. Yutechai added that even though his bank's deposits might not grow as much as other retail segments, UOB Thai believed the deposit level could still expand by double digits this year. Tae Han Chong, the managing director and head of business of UOB Thai, said banks and customers would have to adjust to prepare for changes by the Deposit Protection Agency, which will reduce the per bank guarantee for each depositor to 50 billion baht from next month. He said UOB Thai's outstanding retail lending had grown from 66.03 billion baht to 71 billion baht in the year to date, with a projection of 77 billion baht by year end. About 80% of the retail portfolio is mortgages, with the remainder accounted for by unsecured loans. Chong said the Bank of Thailand repurchase rate, which has already risen from 1.75% last July to the current 3%, is expected to be hiked again at tomorrow's meeting in a bid to rein in inflation. Frontier Markets Investors Leopard Capital plans to launch 75 million US dollars fund targeting investment in financial services, agriculture and power in Laos and Cambodia to tap the two countries' strong economic growth. The two impoverished Southeast Asian countries are slowly emerging as investment destinations. Laos opened a stock market in January on which two stocks are traded. Cambodia officially opened a books on Monday, although trading is unlikely until the end of the year at the earliest. Some global investors that have targeted emerging markets in recent years to escape the sluggish prospects to developed countries after the financial crisis are now looking to move further into exotic places promising fast growth. Japanese fund manager Asset Design said last week that it planned to launch a Cambodian equities fund later this year. Leopard Capital's planned 10-year fund targeting annual returns of 25 percent would invest in hydropower projects in Laos and agricultural production in Cambodia, managing partner Douglas Clayton told Reuters. He said there is minimal competition, so the deal pricing tends to be favorable. There are fast-growing economies, they're both getting 6 to 8 percent growth per year, and during the life of the fund, they will both have stock exchanges and sometimes that can give windfalls returns when markets get overvalued. Clayton said Leopard Capital plan to close the fund for which it targets development banks and wealthy Western investors, among others, by the end of the year. The firm already has a 34 million US dollar fund in investing in Cambodia. Cambodia officially launched its long-delayed stock exchange yesterday, although no companies are yet listed for trading. 
Prime Minister Hun Sen in 2007 announced plans to launch a stock market, saying Cambodia needed to find new ways to attract international capital besides international aid and bank loans. The Cambodian economy is small and reliant on textiles, which account for nearly 80% of exports and hundreds of millions of dollars in international aid. Foreign investment has been deterred by the country's reputation for endemic corruption. However, government of officials, investors and academics applauded the launch, saying it would advance transparency in the country and offer a new path for economic growth. The board was a joint venture between the Cambodian government and the Korea Exchange, which hold 55 percent and 45 percent of the CSX, respectively. The two sides have been working on the project since 2007. The Securities Exchange the Securities and Exchange Commission of Cambodia so far has licensed 15 private companies to serve as underwriters, dealers, brokers and financial advisors for the CSX. Some of the companies are subsidiaries of larger firms operating in more developed markets such as Japan and South Korea. SECC Director General Ming Ban Go Son told reporters last week that three state-owned companies will issue shares on the boards when trading eventually begins, which are Telecom Cambodia and Phnom Penh Water Supply. Some private companies and other state-owned companies also have shown an interest in going public. Cambodia plans to launch the first of several private islands resort that will combine luxury and conservation by December this year. The place is known as Song Sa, which means the sweethearts in Khmer. The eco threat extends to two tiny pristine islands joined together by a footbridge over a marine reserve. Luxury specialist Bridge and Wickers is now taking bookings for this exciting new development as part <coughs> of a tailor-made by package to Cambodia. Way off the beaten track in Cambodia's Got Rong Archipelago, just off the coast of Sihanoukville, are Got On and Got Bong, the two islands that together make up Songsa private islands. On one island is the luxury accommodations and array of 25 stunning overwater rainforests and beach villas built with sustainable materials, including furniture that has been created from restored driftwood on beaches. A major focus for Songsa is the protection and improvement of the local environment, marine life and communities, according to the Australian owners Rory and Melita Hunter. The hunters have been working closely with government and non-governmental organizations, conservation authorities, marine biologists and com community leaders to protect the environment, safeguard local livelihoods and responsibly pave the way for future developers who are likely to follow suit. Having established a marine reserve to safeguard the islands, reefs and marine life, which includes dugongs, seahorses and many species of tropical fish, Songsa will allow guests to experience the area's flora and fauna by dipping into the fascinating ecological program. Singapore has the highest level of internet penetration and access the internet more frequently than consumers across Southeast Asian regions, according to a Nelson survey released on Monday. The survey reported that 67% of Singaporeans aged 15 and above used the internet significantly higher than the Southeast Asian regional average of 38%. Singapore also has the highest regional rate of the internet penetration among the country's youth, with 97% of 15 to 19 years old online, a rate that tapers off to 30% for Singaporeans above 50 years old. Singapore also had the highest frequency of internet access in the Southeast Asian region, with 80% of Singaporeans accessing the internet on a daily basis. About 23% of Singaporeans own a tablet computer and 70% use a smartphone, which Nelson said indicated a motivation among Singaporean consumers to have internet access at any time or place. The study also examined how social media influenced consumers' purchasing decisions. Of the 85% of Singaporeans who frequented social media websites, 69% used it to connect and engage with brands and companies. 
Consumers were also found to have a high trust of online consumer opinions, online product reviews, and discussion forums were rated as one of the most trusted sources of product recommendations, second only to those from family and friends. The Asian Regional Lenders say that the Asian Development Bank, or ADB, and the governments of Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia are starting an initiative to boost biomass waste use for energy and fertilizer. The ADB says biomass waste, such as rice husk and animal manure, is abundant in the greater Mekong regions, but they are underutilized. The ADB is starting a project with a $4 million grant from the Nordic Development Fund and $600,000 from Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia governments to start pilot projects in biogas systems, biochar cleans and improved cooking stoves. The ADB natural and agricultural economist Sunanta Seth Bunsang said in a statement that promoting more efficient use of biomass can simultaneously address the goals of fighting climate change and improving the well-being of the rural poor, which are often seen as competing priorities. The project will conduct studies, build human and institutional capacity on biomass investment, and promote regional exchange among the greater Mekong area countries and harmonize biomass and bioenergy standards. The ADB says the growing practice of large-scale crop production for biofuel poses a threat to food security by reducing food production and forest land. Analysts say fossil fuels are generally cheap, but government tax them at various points, including at extraction and retailing, pushing their prices up. At the same time, renewable energy advocates have managed to divert billions of dollars of taxpayer money into biofuels and related fuels, giving incentives to use food crops as fuel and cut down forests to expand, to expand agriculture. A report said yesterday that the world's cheapest car, or the Nanode, produced by Indian car maker Tata Motors, is likely to be manufactured in Indonesia. It's reported that Indonesia had appeared to win out over Thailand as the production base for the vehicle. The newspaper, quoting an unnamed source, said that as Indonesia had offered more attractive incentives, Tata decided to shelve the expansion plan in Thailand. Reasons included Thailand's lack of political stability and automobile tax structures. The Post reported that Tata was hoping to produce 15,000 nanos a year at a plant in Jakarta from 2013. It plans to export the cars to Thailand, Malaysia and the Philippines as it is banking on their large populations and big demand for low-cost cars. As usual, on the next break, the editors will discuss on the um, on the issues of the Ying Lak Shinawat after the break. <laughs> 